And welcome to the Metaphysical Podcast, a path to the philosopher's stone, magic and knowledge bestowed on only those who have the eyes to see powerful beings and phenomenal cosmic power. No, it's not a live action Dungeons and Dragons movie, but the story of the famed Emerald Tablets. Who was the being known as Toth? Why were occultists like Aleister Crowley and men of science like Isaac Newton interested in what the Emerald Tablets had to say? And what is it about the material of the tablets themselves that made them so special? When you hear the data that remote viewer John Vivanco found about these relics of old, you'll wonder why no one else is talking about this. So join me, investigative researcher Rob Counts and John for a show that's out of this world. And if you are listening to us, the Metaphysical Podcast, uh, or you're watching us on a video platform, please leave us a five-star rating and review. It's going to help us out a lot. We really, really appreciate it. And make sure you like and subscribe wherever you're listening, watching, one of those things. Thank you, guys. Yes, we appreciate this. John, how you doing? Good. Good. I'm excited for this episode. Um, Thoth? Thoth. Is it Thoth or Thoth? Thoth, Thoth, or Thoth. I call him. Thoth or Thoth. Like my first TH is a little bit off, like Toth. It's like if your mom, your mom had a lisp and she always called the Easter bunny, Ether bunny. Ether bunny. <laughs> and so you're like freaked out every time Easter comes around. Yeah. Kids, the Ether bunny's coming. And, uh, and that's the end of the episode. That's who Thoth that's is. It. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Um, let's just get, get on with this. <laughs> no, we, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird subject. It's um, a highly researched subject right uh, historically speaking i mean we're, we're talking about some of the some of the most foundational like journeys and existential questions that men have had throughout history all revolving around this emerald tablet i mean w the philosopher's stone uh immortality um uh just it, texts that seem to allude to something that could bring one to a higher state of mind. Is it, is it truth? Is it garbage? What is it? I mean, this is, this is really, and I mean, we've got like, like Isaac Newton himself was pretty obsessed with this whole thing. He was trying to create the philosopher's stone, even transcribed. You can see here, um, the Emerald tablet onto, um, or engraved it, and he had this in his um, in his studio, I believe, when he was. Yeah, right. And so this is the this is the Hermes Trismegistus uh, emerald tablet, I guess. Right, what you're talking about, not right. the emerald tablets of Thoth, right? Different. The I believe that they're the same, aren't? I mean, well, that's a good question. So there is the the emerald tablet that was that was penned by Hermes Trismegistus, right? And then there are these emerald tablets of Toth. And oh. yeah, are there, is there a difference between those two? Well, okay, so if you get to the emerald tablets of Toth, uh, that was, is that, are you talking about the one, the emerald tablets of Toth, the Atlantean? See, this is exactly the questions we need to answer on this <laughs> because that's podcast. a different thing than yeah. the emerald tablet, the Hermes uh, Trismegistus thing. Different. I think, and I think that there. So the emerald tablets, from my understanding, are attributed to Hermes Trismegistus. Are they the not? tablet is yeah the tablet? But, but well, okay. So we'll go into it. Let's talk about the emerald well, tablet, the singular. Okay, first of all. Before everyone freaks out about this conversation, <laughs> what people need to understand about this figure, Toth or Thoth or whatever you want to call him, is that apparently and reportedly, Toth was an Atlantean and he was immortal. And he was said to, he, he was apparently, now this is what they say, is that he didn't die. And if he did, if he did decide to perish and be reborn it wasn't because he died it was because that's what he wanted and so hermes trismegistus trismegistus means thrice born so this was the third incarnation of thoth or toth or whatever you want to call him toth and 
uh, and the the emerald tablet that we're talking about here that was written by Hermes Trismegistus is where this term as above so below comes from that guys like Aleister Crowley and all of these other people were talking about and a lot of alchemical discussions throughout history have all revolved around the, these tablets all apparently owned by this reincarnating whatever this thing is named Toth. That's my understanding. My, the best that I can give right now. What do you think, John? Well, okay. So, so one thing that's happened is that two things have been mixed together into one, which historically, which happens when you get into uh, these types of ideas. Um, it's kind of like, Aramu Muru in near Lake Titicaca in Peru. So Aramu Muru, that that gateway of the gods, you know, it's a stone cut false door in the side of a, a, a cliff face. Um, that was never called Aramu Muru until a tour operator decided to call it that because he read a book that was channeled, uh, Secrets of the Andes, I think, in the 19, I think the book was channeled in the 1950s, 60s, something like that. And he decided that he was going to call it Aramu Muru because that was the name of the priest that this channel book talked about going through a portal um, to escape the Spanish and bring back this Atlantean relic. Right. So that was never in any of the lore until recent times. And what happens is that people start mixing that story, that channeled story with this and the native peoples who live right there in the region even now call this Aramamuru, um, which then people talk about, well, yeah, historically this Spanish uh, priest went through there or this uh, Atlantean priest went through there, right? You know, the native people take on the story as well. This is the same kind of deal where you have the Hermes Trismegistus one that is, is really old, it's one tablet, they call it one tablet, right? Very old, as above, so below. Then in the 1930s, you have a channeled book called the, uh, the, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, the Atlantean. Okay, so that is separate from the original one. And right. now, his, now people are mixing those two things together. Okay, mm -hmm. so with remote viewing, you got to look at those two things separately to understand, like, where did that, where did the, the other, where did the newer one come from? compared to where the older one came from. Um, so there's and the, and the newer one in this case is which of those? The, the Atlantean side, right? The Atlantean so the channel, the channel book from, okay. So, you know, that was Maurice Dorial who created the, the lodge of the white brotherhood or the white, <clears throat> the white lodge in Colorado, the white brotherhood. Right? I, I do recall that. That's right. Right. So he created that and he claims that he he was called to Egypt uh, in the 1920s, I think 1925, to receive the emerald tablets of Thoth, the Atlantean, and rehide them and translate them. Uh, so he claims he went to Egypt. He did that. <clears throat> he came back and he got permission by the White Brotherhood to publish that. And so then that comes the book. And so a lot of the stories that you hear about that, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, are that he actually translated them, translated by Maurice Darial. That, that, that really implies right there that it is a physical object, right? And he's a scholar of some sort. But that's not the case. Um, that's not the case. Hmm. Do you want to go down this path? No, I it's good. Like I think this is I think this is good cuz the the entire I actually am not I do think that they're when we're talking about the the alchemy and Toth and Hermes from okay, I had this crazy rabbit hole that I went down a few years back all revolved around the staff that Hermes carries. Now when we talk about Hermes, we're talking about the god Hermes in Greek Rome culture, Roman culture. Right, that's right, also right. Mercury, right? This staff also, what I found is that this is where it gets kind of weird is that the God Hermes is the same as the God Mercury and the God Loki and the God Toth are all the same being. Right. 
Okay. So when we're talking about Hermes, Hermes is supposed to be a reincarnation of Toth. That's what they, that's what they say. Right. Um, right. This caduceus staff, this trap, the staff of transformation is also everything that alchemy revolves around, which is right. transforming uh, matter into another matter or transforming your human body as a mortal body into an immortal body. So this idea of transformation is this ever present goal that human beings have, you know, and, and it doesn't, it hasn't really changed even now. What is even science trying to do? It is the same type of pursuits that human beings have. And um, now what they say, like that some of the history revolved around this character uh, Thoth is that he apparently was not a, an original god of the Egyptian pantheon, but was somehow fit himself in and came into the mix via Atlantis, like an ancient being of Atlantis, and then eventually reincarnating himself a few times until penning the emerald tablet of, of Toth, which is also you know, signed by Hermes Trismegistus. Right. Um, so I do think there are connections, but then um, logistically speaking, what you just said is very important. Like these were channeled books. And then we're talking about an Emerald tablet that goes back hundreds of years. And I kind of want to just skip to the, to the ending and ask a little bit here because it's like, yeah. what the F what the heck are these emerald emerald tablets that have been channeled? Is there any legitimacy to these things? Because I'll tell you, I'm not getting good vibes from the entire thing. <laughs> right. Well, the okay. So, so Maurice Doriel, like he 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 makes these claims, and then he releases the book, and he builds this facility um, in Colorado in the 1930s. And the book, the book was based off of a lot of Blavatsky's work and others before him. Uh, and, and he never actually went to Egypt. He never actually went to Egypt. And he didn't actually translate anything. It was Wasn't all the guy like a dentist or something weird. Like they found a, out later. He was a cab driver. Yeah, cabbie. He was a cab driver. Yeah. And he, um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's like. You know, no, but he's claiming to be like, he's a cult leader at this point, right? The white he's brotherhood. A cult leader. Right. So when we looked at, we looked at a couple different things around him in general. Okay. So first off, we looked at the reality of the emerald tablets, plural, in his claim. Don't exist. Those don't exist. They don't exist physically. They're not something that is real, right? His, his and when we looked at him, his psychological state, I mean, he was not very stable. He, he had some insights, right? He had some insights, but these, these insights were very confused to him. And, and he tried to make up all of this stuff around it to try to make sense of it. And that is the channel book. It's not, it's not anything that is based in, in a reality. Now, when you read the channeled book, though, there are insights in there, right? There are things in there that that are like, oh, wow, wisdom, right? Oh, interesting wisdom. And it will affect people. People will be like, wow, he really is, you know, channeling really something greater than truth, right? right? You know, but but the thing is, is that he doesn't claim it's channeled. He claims that he went to Egypt. So there, there's a lot of issues I have when people put that in the forefront and not say I channeled this because right there, they tell you that they're trying to, they, they did, they're just trying to hide something. Right. So, so the thing with a lot of the spiritualist type writings is that they will take nuggets of a, of really good insight and then a bunch of stuff that's garbage. And it's kind of like how disinformation works. It's not, I'm not saying that they're disinformation people. It's just that, that little nuggets can be correct. And then there's a whole junk of stuff that's just not true. Just not, it's just not reality. It's not truth. So that's what this is. Like he was, he was in a very un, unstable mind state. 
when he he wrote this, channeled it, created it. Um, so it's the, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, tablets, plural, the Atlantean. It, it's not something to get anything out of. It doesn't relate. He was trying to relate it to the Hermes Trismegistus right. one, but but he really just made made it up. Mm. So no, I wouldn't I wouldn't take it as being serious. Those things don't exist in in, in a physical reality in general. And they, there's a fan mind. It's interesting that it's actually the Doreal guy. You know, I looked into this a little bit and it's not that hard to find what really went on. I mean, we're, we're looking at a guy who was reading fantasy and science fiction, right. and even writing into some of these magazines who is hiding his, you know, is saying that he was kind of hiding that he was a cab driver before. And then all of a sudden, you know, people start finding out about it. And yet people still follow this whole thing. Like it's, very because, it's because they get a, a whiff of the, some of the, the wisdom within it. And then they take it all as being true. See, here's the thing, like, like wisdom words, words of wisdom are meant to inspire you to go inside yourself and release and let go of the words because the words are not going to give you ultimately what you want. They're just going to create more thoughts, right? So ultimately what it's supposed to do is inspire you inward. That's what words of wisdom are supposed to do because they're useless as words. You're not going to get anywhere with words. You're going to get somewhere by having your own like experiential experience of those words, <laughs> ultimately. So if it, if, if it does that for people, then excellent. Excellent. But I don't think it does that. I think people just gobble up the words and say, this is how it is. And then they don't do anything else about it. Well, as it, it certainly as appears that it certainly appears that way with some of the, you know, the videos out on YouTube about right these emerald tablets and stuff like that. And then, then you have though, this, this historical Hermes Trismegistus guy who's written an emerald tablet where you've got guys like Sir Isaac Newton revering it and looking into it and trying to right. understand the deeper truths. And I guess even search for what's called the philosopher's stone here and, and, and alchemy comes into play here where, um, you know, there's a lot of bizarre, I mean, did you hear of this book of Aquarius that came out? A, a, a I while haven't, back? I, I haven't heard of the book. Like I know you sent it to me yesterday, but I'm like, I've never heard of this thing. Okay. I can't remember the exact date that the book appeared. Okay. But it, it was well after the internet is underway. And one, I think it maybe even been around 2011 or 12 or something like that, or, or just earlier, like 2008. Anyway, point is this book comes out. It is released online as a, you know, many, many page book, right? And it is supposed to unveil the methods to create the Philosopher's Stone over a okay. very long period of time. And the Philosopher's Stone, and what's bizarre about this is that the process this alchemical process is supposed to take place by boiling and distilling urine over a very long period of time, which is just kind of ridiculous. Right. And it, it's like people got up so obsessed with this book and everyone trying to figure out how to do it over a really long period of time. They started to actually figure out how to create this stone that could be distilled down. It definitely doesn't look like that. It's more white, the stone. This looks like something from a fantasy movie or something. Um, Correct. This is from Harry Potter. There you go. So the, the stone actually is supposed to be more like a stone. It's this white distilled urine that is apparently supposed to give you some type of... So it's basically just like a kidney stone. It's it's weird, man. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And people got really like they were we're talking about online forums we're making people, jewelry out of it. And yeah, stuff people, like that. people were going crazy trying to figure out how that's a very nice looking crystal there. That's definitely not it. Yeah, that's, de <laughs> that's not definitely it. not it. Um, <laughs> oh, you can buy Zha Zha, the urine stone. That's awesome. And, you know, it's interesting, too, because um, we're al alchemists throughout history. um have really, really been obsessed with this. I mean, we're talking about like going back to like John D 
it, trying to figure out how to build the Philosopher's Stone so that they could change normal metals into gold. Right. Um, Nicholas Flamel, who is said to have found the recipe for uh, immortality and um, disappeared, you know, uh, didn't die, disappeared, you know, faked his own death or whatever it was. Um, right. The story goes. Well, you pretty... know, the, the, what's the story? There's there's a story, too, where um, humans used to live a long time. I think this comes from the Bible, right? Um, humans no, lived I'm... beyond a certain age, hundreds of years. Yeah. But then they decided to cap it like the God or gods decided to cap it at 100 years or 120 years old. So humans can't get beyond that genetically. So there's like this really weird subconscious deep obsession as though it comes from some genetic memory in our DNA to want to live forever. Um, but then on the other side of that, like the Philosopher's Stone is, is not different than the Chintamani Stone. If you know what the Chintamani Stone is, no. that is that is the wish fulfilling jewel that comes out of uh, the, the idea of Shambhala in Tibet, mm. where um, the Chintamani stone uh, was, was, gosh, it was like a friend of the president of the United States had a piece of the Chintamani stone at a certain point, a friend of Roosevelt's. And he gave it to the Roricks mm -hmm. who were partially employed by the United States government to find Shambhala and bring the other half of the Chintan Manai back. So this is different, different stone, but same as the uh, Philosopher's Stone. So when we remote view these so-called stones, they're not a physical thing. They're not physical. They're not something that create, is created through matter. These are, these are like enlightenment. This is, this is the en jewel of enlightenment. And this is, a, this is an internal tempering process, hermeticism. And and um, all chemical this all chemical uh, reaction world is about is about a person going inside of themselves and how you go inside of yourself to create this philosopher's stone the Chintamani stone it's the wish fulfilling jewel it's not something physical that's what that's what we've seen when we remote view this stuff you know it's, it's, it's interesting a... because this is exactly you know the holy grail is a very similar thing this grail of of, of immortality. Right. You know, we're talking about a, a large period of time after Jesus died, you know, basically up until around 1200, 1300, where the Holy Grail was like a cultivation way where people right. were searching for the Grail. But the Grail was not something that you right. physical you find. It was something you found. You have to go yourself. on an internal journey. Right. But you but you had actual guys like Hitler, believing that this was a physical, right. something physical, you know, that, that he could obtain and drink from the cup to obtain the immortality that he could use to rule yeah. for a thousand yeah. years. Right. Yeah. Now, the immortality is your own release from your own suffering, your release into freedom. So mm -hmm. you are free from yourself. That's the immortality. Mm. To the, the the perception that you are limited, uh, removing that perception that you are limited and you are forever. That's the immortality. That's the immortality part. I mean, when we looked at, you know, describe who the subject Hermes Trismegistus was, it wasn't an actual person. Um, it was uh, it was like um, different aspects of philosophies coming together into one as opposed to one single individual. I mean, it could be construed as multiple gods or whatever, but, but literally the data was all about like, like all these pieces coming together to form one thing um, that had to do with uh, a path to walk, basically. So, um, Lindsay, keep this picture up. So what the heck is this guy holding here? Yeah, what is that? Can you imagine showing up at a party looking like this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's that's uh, what is that thing supposed to represent? So there's a there's an for everyone who's listening on podcast, we're we're looking at a very famous engraving of what you know is supposed to be Hermes uh, Trismegistus, and he there is the the this sun and uh, what looks like the moon. It's the or the earth, I guess. It, it's this idea of 
you know, I guess this idea of as above, so below that's fascinated a bunch of these occultists throughout history. He's holding something in his hand that looks bizarre, some spinning mm, glo globular thing. I'm not really sure what it is. And, uh, you know, so and that just that that's it. Just uh, Alistair Crowley considered this to be a sacred test. We're talking about a uh, sacred text. We're, we're talking about, um, you know, all the occultists in history and the alchemists in history referencing referencing this as this, if it was a deep, very hidden thing. Edgar Casey actually mentioned it eight times in his psychic readings, stressing the importance of the study and understanding of the material, which is weird because well and he he just he indicated that it was much older than than currently believed and yeah you know, we don't know you know edgar casey was a channeler it's important to recognize that i mean we don't know where this information was coming from yeah i don't i mean what looking at um the meaning like looking at the meaning of the the Emerald tablet, the Tris Trismegistus one. Um, it was weird because a lot of the data revolved around um, stuff being um, blocked and 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 run through a bureaucracy. Like like there were a group of people that decided to put out just a section of something much larger and not reveal the larger part of it. Um. So I thought that was very strange in general. Like, you know, we're talking about hermeticism here and, and this small, like I, I tend to think that this small one single Emerald tablet, there's more to it based off of our data. That's never actually been revealed. But then, you know, when you get to the Emerald tablets of Thoth the Atlantean and remote viewing that, well, the guy just made that stuff up. So, so it's a very, this, like, this is a really, really strange thing that is not straightforward in remote viewing data. Like there's a lot of holes in it. There's a lot of like, it's not going in this direction or that direction. It's literally being shut off on every direction as far as remote viewing data goes. It's like there was more to it that they were supposed to put with it that they didn't. So ultimately, they cut some out. Yeah, ultimately, because yeah. it would give people a greater understanding of what that path truly is. And I think this might be where people get very mixed up in the world of like, well, I'm going to turn my pee into a stone. Right. <laughs> and I think that that's, I think that that is the problem. That's where they intended people to go. So they'd misinterpret and, and not know that this actually frees you from yourself. Hmm. There's a video before we get into some more of this data, there's a video that I want to pull up. I actually sent you this video yesterday um, because I kind of like I like listening to the academic um, interpretations of things as much right. as I like getting into the metaphysical side of things. And uh, there is a, a doctor um, that I like listening to. His name's Dr. Uh, Justin Sledge, and he. He's um he's a professor. I can't remember what college and he has a YouTube channel. I believe the YouTube channel is called Esoterica, I believe. And uh, this is a clip from a video where he is he is attempting to shed light on the emerald tablet of Toth, um, where he's kind of describing and I want to help people understand this because it took me a, I had to research quite a bit. The confusion, the historical confusion around this, I guess you could say, script, document, tablet, whatever you want to call it, where before we watch the video, um, Lindsay's going to pull it up for us soon. The this what he is saying or what he is proposing is that some of the things that have sent really smart people on a wild goose chase is translation. It's improper right. translation from, or not just improper, it could be lazy and or, or the changing of language over a really long period of time where you have in this document a word like talisman being used and then people will go on a wild goose chase for a hundred years trying to figure out exactly right. what this word actually means. But then previously a hundred years, 400 years, 
for a thousand years, this word meant something completely different in that language. And then you've got you've got the tablet being translated from potentially Greek to Syriac, 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 whatever, and then into uh, Arabic. And the translations from those, there's so much difference between each translation. And then at the end, people are trying to figure out what this thing means. Right. And, it, and at that point, we've got so much lost in translation where where the the words could allude to in the in the newest translation, it could allude to something that seems meaningful, but might not right. have been in the original text. And this I don't know if this is boring to you guys at home. But to me, I'm like, wow, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. And, you know, we have been talking and having a lot of discussion about, you know, the the truth behind the legends and all that stuff. But what are the legends? I think it's really important that we go over some of this. Um, now, you know, there's going to be a lot of different stuff on different sites. So I've kind of compiled a little bit of this. So just keep that in mind. But this this character Toth was the god's scribe. Now, that's how he's described. And, and he divided his knowledge into many emerald plates. OK, and he wrote all of the magic of the world on them, which would reveal the truth about this realm, nature, the language of birds, what the creeping creatures of the earth are saying, the deepest fish in the sea and the world of the dead the history of earth and even the image of gods. Okay. So the legend says that after the gods fall, the tablets were hidden so that no human might find them. And only Toth, of course, on his return to that dimension would be able to uncover the mystery book. Some accounts actually say that the tablets were kept in a hall of records or in the library of Alexandria. And, um, now, this is actually where I think it gets even more interesting. So the tablet was coveted by a king who stole it. He hid it inside a box within a box, within a golden box, which was protected by an immortal snake. Okay, that's crazy. Um, beneath a statue of Hermes in Turkey was an old corpse on a golden throne holding the emerald tablet. Now, there are different stories of how this was found. Some reports say that it was Alexander the Great that walked into this and found the emerald tablet here. But there's another story that says that Abraham's wife, Sarah, yeah, the biblical Abraham, uh, found Toth's tomb and his manuscripts during their escape into Egypt, feeling a f uh, fleeing, excuse me, a, f a famine in uh, Canaan. Did I pronounce that right, Lindsay? Canaan. Canaan. Thank you. Oh, so in this case, the tablets would predate the Great Flood. All right. Now, <laughs> this is where it gets kind of crazy, too. Is it's, The tablets are reported to say that the author, Hermes Trismegistus, built the Great Pyramid in Egypt. Um, the ancient origins website hypothesizes that the pyramids actually spell out Tehu the Great Tehu the Great Wise, and that Tehu refers to Toth, which could confirm this or at least confirm that cuneiform was modeled on a much more ancient system of writing. So what do you what do you think of this, John? Well, this is this is um, coming from the uh, Maurice Darial book, uh, The Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, uh, which was remote viewing this was a made-up story ultimately channeled and made up um nothing to do with the emerald tablet the hermes trismegistus one nothing to do with it right but there you have it there is the actual legends and um right now what i think is interesting is if we kind of see the other side of this which is uh dr jason sledge or dr justin sledge's uh video which talks about the origins sort of the origins of this um and uh, yeah so why don't we take it away from there okay so we're about to watch a video uh here from dr justin sledge and it's basically all uh about that's about this kind of topic of really 
where did this tablet come from? Any claims of the Emerald Tablet being from Atlantis, ancient Sumeria, China, Phoenicia, aliens, the secret records under the Sphinx, Martian spirits or the ascended master Kimmy Gibbler are, well, <laughs> complete and total nonsense. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny. Because he's he's an academic that got annoyed enough yeah. to drop the uh, the BS bomb on right. his on his video, right? And yeah, I think because he's looking at the substance of the original text and and trying to track it back throughout history, and then all of a sudden you have, like you said, these strange channeled tablets that come into play from what's the guy's name, Dory 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 All, yeah, yeah. And um, it's 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 just it's confusing the matter ultimately, and it and he's exactly right. He's exactly right. They're two separate things. They're not related to each other. One guy made it up, but the other side of this, the very old one, does not have all the information in it. It doesn't. It's been cut out because the people who actually brought it forward were intent on more of a control side, bureaucracy, manipulation. That's the kind of stuff we got in the data, hiding something. So so what you get in the, in the Emerald Tablet is not all of it. And like I said before, this is why people go down that path of, of trying to turn things into matter with it when it's not about that. It's about you going in you, Chintamani stone, wish fulfilling jewel, philosopher stone to create that, the, the alchemical process of becoming enlightened. That's what it is. So if all of it was revealed, it would be a totally different story. But hey, you know what? That would free humans from their own mental slavery. And if you keep humans in mental slavery, you can control them. That's, that's what this is all about. And so I don't even look at the, um, the Emerald tablet as being relevant for me personally, uh, because everything's left out of it, you know, like that, that's why you had, I think Isaac Newton, he's like, he's like trying to figure, does this deal with physical reality? Because all his friends are talking about it, like turning, um, iron and lead into gold, right? Like, is this, is this something physically we can do? I mean, this, that's what most people are interested in when it comes to this stuff. So, nah, not, 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 it's not that. It's not that yeah. at all. You know what's interesting too, Lindsay, if you can pull up that um, image that I guess the Aristotle engraving where it, I've seen this particular engraving that Lindsay is going to pull up um, in so much pop culture even um have you ever seen that um series on netflix called dark yeah i did man that was intense dude probably yeah. one of the best written series yeah. i've ever seen yeah actually but what was interesting is one of the one of the main characters i guess you could say or the main villains had this um engraving on his back this one right here and the 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 right. film revolved around or sorry the film the series revolved around time travel really right. yeah um it was it was a a very interesting series if you guys haven't seen it but what i thought was so interesting about this is this is the you know engraving there it is yeah that scene was really intense when that was revealed on his back yeah uh but yeah What's interesting about this, if you go back to the engraving, is that this also seems to be incomplete, kind of. Yeah. It almost looks like a tablet that has the top part. You know, I, obviously, this is chiseled onto a, a mountain or something, right? But right. it almost looks like a tablet that's that's incomplete because of the shape. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is really, I think it's telling you that, that it is incomplete <laughs> in general. This is... And, and, and do, where where where's the original tablet as well? Where where's is the that? original tablet? Like what? Where where did Aristotle? Sorry, not Aristotle. Sir Isaac Newton get the original text from? Right. And and I think this is where guys like Dr. Justin Sledge can kind of shed some light on some of these things, like the history around some of these things, because they are bizarre right you know their yeah. their history is bizarre as well 
I know. I know. That's, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, it, 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 it almost feels like a lot of times the remote viewing data sort of like kills an idea flow, energy flow in a certain direction, and then starts to flow in a different direction. Um, and I know that a lot of people get upset. A lot of people will argue over, you know, what the remote viewing data said on this, but, but it's, it's, it's one of those things that it's like, people are always being kept in the dark over this sort of stuff and, and take it in a different direction. That's a waste of time. And a lot of this stuff is a waste of time. Think about 100%. how many men spent their lives right. trying to concoct a philosopher's stone or figure things out because of right. an incomplete piece of text that that's in front of us. And the other thing that I think is so interesting is to me, this, this is not, this does not like undermine the excitement around this. For me, I think it makes it so much better because we just like, look what we realized again. It's like, we have all of these people throughout history, wasting their time on material things. Right. And when the actual answer to the immortality that you're looking for is actually inside and it, and it takes this process, this, this actual hard work of changing the substance in your body from something that is of this earth to something that is beyond. Exactly. You know? And, and that, that is, is so well said, you know, when we, when we get to remote viewing the Rorix, <clears throat> absolutely fascinating story, Nicholas and Helena Rorick out of the 1930s, was it 1920s, thirties sent to Tibet to find Shambhala by the United States government of all, I mean, they were funded, they were funded. Yeah. And, and the most amazing thing that we saw in the data is that at a certain point, they realized that Shambhala is not something that exists for them to actually walk into, that it's an internal mental state, internal enlightened state. And so they started to actually work on their own process of enlightenment to get into Shambhala, right? But, but, but up until then, you know, these, these people are such materialists. They think they're going to go knock on a door, right? I mean, that was the other side of the whole Shambhala thing too, is that the governments were interested in the potential supernatural weapons, you know, Hey, let's get these guys to go there. They're, they're, they're quasi spiritual and, and, and they can maybe knock on the door of Shambhala, get in, then we can get their supernatural weapons. Right. I mean, man, it's funny. It's kind of sad. Well, and you know, at the same time though, when we're, we're looking at these different cultures that talk about Shambhala or paradise or heaven, these places aren't necessarily a figment of our imagination. We're talking not, about because they we're still actually about, exist, right? Higher dimensional stuff. And how do you yeah. get there? But through that process right. of actually raising yourself, like, like what, what I think is, is, is my take home here. And, and what I think that I hope everyone's take home from this episode is, is that why are we like, again, why are we focusing on these material things when, when the higher, the higher answers are actually at levels that we need to obtain Al you can say alchemically the the Taoists certainly in China were alchemists and yet they were trans they were transmutating their bodies into something higher right exactly and and so he, you know we've got yeah. the same the same idea here and and you could say that in any process like the search for the holy grail the holy grail is that whole search we're talking about Christians for hundreds of years searching for the grail inside themselves right you know it's beautiful, actually. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's what it is. That's what it all means. That's what it's about. And it's outside of words. No, the words should inspire to, to take you for you, you yourself to go on that experiential journey, mm. because that's where the words came from to begin with. Mm. And the words are not it. The words only point to it, where you're supposed to go with it. And that's what's left out of the um, Emerald Tablet. Mm. Very cool. Yeah. And actually, um, you know, what's funny, too, is we talked about this in a previous episode. Everybody's looking for this philosopher's stone. And yet if, everybody is. Yeah, if you raise, you know, if you raise your your level, you 
like monks' bodies, we've talked about this, end up accumulating right. these stones in them called sarira. And it's not actually an accumulation of stone in the body. It's after the body, what they say is that after the body has passed on, the explosion of that energy that they've been obtaining in their lower abdomen, it's called the mm -hmm. area, it actually explodes and the, they're left with these little, you know, hard r like crystals called sarira. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people on, on our comments are like, oh, these are kidney stones or these are these things. But like, there's no way kidney stones would even be left in the body after after like the cremation process, the cremation process, only something of this nature would be able to last uh, like the the extreme degrees that mm -hmm. we're talking about. Only bo like some bone and some like calcified minerals are left. And this is clearly not that. Well, I'm glad we actually blew the top off of that a little bit because I think um, there's been a lot. I think there's a lot of confusion revolved around the tablets in general, that tablet particularly. And, um, uh, you know, what this this idea of uh, of a, a, an Atlantean priest named Toth who infiltrated Egypt and I um, want it to be real. <laughs> I want it to be real. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, like I, I see the craziest and have said the craziest stuff that I claim to be real. Like, why can't this be real too? He lived for, he ruled for what? 50,000 years in Egypt or something. Or that's 30, what the, years. well, that's the claims, right? right? All right, you guys. Well, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for um, supporting us and, and hanging out with us. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, this episode. John, did you have anything else to, to add here? Nah, I'm all right. Nothing <laughs> all right, else. you guys. Hope you thought this was as out of this world as we did, and we will see you guys next time.